Hey guys, welcome to LMT Infinite. And today we're gonna show you a 2011 Chinese historical drama film called 1911. Spoilers ahead. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The movie begins when a woman in a pillory marches the streets surrounded by different people staring at her. She's assertively ready to give up her life for the revolution despite knowing she'll leave her family behind. Afterwards, she reaches the public square and is quickly executed with a long sword. One morning in Malaysia, a group of revolutionaries sleeps on the floor of a huge messy room. They implicitly leave as they are awakened by the presence of Exu Zongan, a woman and a member of Tongmingwe, silently gathering their clothes scattered on the floor. As the revolutionaries leave, they speedily head straight to the beach and shout out of excitement to swim. Wang Xing is left behind in the huge room, and sleeping thus forbids disturbance. Minutes later, Wang Xing wakes up to hear Sun Wen's farewell. He's heading to Guangzhou for the uprising. Wang Xing angrily disagrees as Sun Wen defies the assignment of going overseas to collect funds. Sun Wen suddenly changes his mind as he gives his pocket watch to Xing. They pledge to monitor the upcoming uprising at the same time. Later, Sun introduces Zhong Hin to Xing as she approaches to hand over the letters collected from the revolutionaries. Unexpectedly, Sun suggests they act as husband and wife to make their cover convincing, and Xing grows surprisingly bashful. Five months later, a war occurs in the governor's mansion in Guangzhou. Wang Xing, together with the revolutionaries, commences the attack. Zhang Minqi, acting governor, manages to escape together with his wives by commanding his underling to bomb the wall. Night comes, and the revolutionaries are completely outnumbered. Bullets keep coming through, and Xing is shot in his chest, and Sun Wen's pocket watch blocks the bullet and saves his life. Meanwhile, Yu Pailin, one of the revolutionaries, sacrifices his life by running with a bomb in his hand, set to explode with him and the enemies. Singh is mutedly flabbergasted as he sees him from afar. At the same time in San Francisco, Sun Wen arrives and sits backstage in the theater while he keeps track of the ongoing war. As he sets to give his speech on the stage, many people gather to see and listen to him. He is tasked with raising a fund initially for the uprising in Guangzhou. However, the uprising fails. He expresses his sorrow over the death of most of the revolutionaries, and the crowd is silent. After that, he receives $300,000 in cash from Xie Gongtang to use for their mission fund. The day comes, and Qing is left alone combating the enemies in Guangzhou. From a distance, the enemies unhesitantly fire the cannon where he currently hides. Many people curiously watch the losing battle, Song Hen is one of them. A young Xuantang emperor named Pai arrives at the Qin Palace, where Empress Dowager Longyu, his mother, and the rest of the king ministers and aristocrats discuss Sun Wen's exertions. The officials petitioning request to arrest him, but Longyu furiously commands him to not make haste, but instead make peace. Meanwhile, Lin Juman, one of Singh's members, is badly beaten and has a pillory on his neck and chains on his bloody feet. He is furiously interrogated by Zhang Minki to know why he and the rest of the revolutionaries revolt. Juman answers him provokingly, as if he's ready to sacrifice his life for what he fights for. Consequently, with his rebellion against the dynasty, he is thrown into a sea to die. After some time, on a rainy day, the bodies of the revolutionaries are found lying unconscious and completely chained up by the seashore. Lin Juman is one of them. No one survives as the bodies are covered with mud and have no signs of breathing. In Guangzhou, Xing is still stuck in his hiding spot with his two fingers bloodily torn apart. Zonghen loudly pounds to his door and desperately calls his name. Zonghen destroys the door and sees him with a knife. She confusingly assumes he'll commit suicide. She stops him. Xing explains that he'll cut his fingers to wield his gun. Zhong Han frighteningly stops him again, but he does it anyway. Time passes, and Sun Wen is delighted with the telegram he receives about Tsing surviving the uprising. 
He gladly brags sing to the young boys he's walking in a busy market. The boys lead him to the residence of Homer Lee, an American strategist he searches to speak with. Minutes later, Sun discusses the Chinese Revolution with Homer as he has the most significant interest in it. Homer desperately wants to join the Chinese Revolution, but Sun refuses, and Homer still insists. Afterwards, he sincerely praises Sun for his good intentions and influence on people. He suggests that he should run for the presidency. Sun is honored. Months pass and revolutionaries are increasing in numbers. Many are punished and killed for mutiny. The war against the Qing dynasty and army continues, leaving massive deaths and destruction. One morning, Sun is stunned by the news about the revolution's success in Wuching. He commands his subordinate to telegram Singh in Hong Kong to depart immediately to Wuchang and lead the revolution. Sun swiftly decides to leave for Europe as soon as possible to acquire funds before the Qing dynasty. Homer is determined to join him, but he refuses to invite him. After that, Singh receives the telegram and is primed to depart to Wuchang immediately. Zongen, who's with him in Hong Kong, flounces out of concern for his safety. She is worried for him, but he assures her he'll be back well and alive. Afterwards, she angrily opens the door to make him leave as she is still displeased with him. Inside the King Palace, ministers and aristocrats argue over who shall be put in complete command over the next battle against the revolutionaries. Kekshu Shichang, one of the ministers, highly suggests Yuan Shikai should be in charge of the war. Ministers react negatively. However, Long Yu favors his suggestion. Meanwhile, the royal prince talked over the shortage in supplies for the Qing army and pushed on taking loans from four nations' banks. Long Yu is annoyed and basically ignores him as she walks on her way to her son. One afternoon in a battle of Hui, revolutionaries forcefully put General Lai Yuanong into a tight spot to lead them while attacking his own ally. He is forcefully dragged into the battlefield to command and commence an attack on a distant military ship, and they succeed. Afterwards, he proudly announces to switch sides and lead the revolutionaries. One morning, under seclusion, Yuan Shikai is suddenly tasked with full command of the Qing army. He appoints two different leaders to lead the Qing army in the next battle against the revolutionaries. The Wuching uprising begins. No one in command, the revolutionaries are outnumbered, and their base is entirely destroyed. Later that day, Xing arrives and is appointed commander in defense of Hanku and Hanyang. He preparedly commands combat with the enemies. Meanwhile, Yuan Shikai used all means possible to take the revolutionaries down. Wang, a former revolutionary, shares all information he has about the revolutionaries to help with the mission of Shikai and provide advantages to the king army as well. After a while, Sun Wen arrives at one of the banks in Europe. He unhesitantly pleads with the gentlemen there to switch sides and support the revolutionists, and they ignore him and leave, and Sun convinces them loudly until he is asked to lower his voice and leave the premises. Later on, Sun uninvitably goes to an occasion to convince bankers to reconsider the loan on the Qing dynasty while they are having their meal. Minister Tang, a representative of the Qing dynasty, eagerly wants to leave as they should not be at the same place at the same time. Afterwards, Sun gives his persuasive speech to the bankers and the aristocrats. They are still not convinced until such time. Sun reassures them that their deal with the Qin dynasty is lossy. Meanwhile, the Battle of Wuching continues. Singh's troop struggles their way closer to the enemies. Many die, whereas others strive to move forward under Xing's command. After that, the Wuching uprising succeeds. Enemies cease the battle bringing victory to the revolutionaries. After some time, Yuan Shikai goes to the Qin Palace to report their failure in the war and then beggingly requests funds to stop the revolution the next time. Peace with revolutionaries is his way of solving the conflict, which the ministers are displeased to hear. Minutes later, Long Yu dishearteningly weeps by the minister's reaction. They induce her by offering their possessions to end the revolution, and their loan deals with four nations' banks are taken by Sun. 
leaving them penniless to sustain the next battle. Sun, on the other hand, is called to Minister Tang's office. His interference in the four nation banks causes controversy throughout China. He is ordered to be assassinated. Tang lets him go as they are on the same page. At some point, Xing is ordered to transfer to Nanjing after the success in the Wuching battle. On board, he arrives at a ship where he witnesses Zhong Yin. Injured revolutionary soldiers are treated. He witnesses Zhong Yin in bloody military nurse clothes, saddened after the passing of one man she's treating. Later, Singh surprisingly sees Sun on the ship after months of being widely separated. As they land, Sun is welcomed by a massive crowd to celebrate his return. Reporters ask him several questions regarding the revolution and its goal. On the other hand, Singh surveys his surroundings to capture anyone with a scheme against Sun. After some time, Yuan Shikite tactically gathers negotiation parties from the south to form an alliance in negotiation. He aims for a republic by instituting a constitutional monarchy, but the South disagrees. Soon after, they agree to establish a republic if Yuan wins the presidential election. At night, Yuan Chikai eats dinner with his family and a representative of their negotiation named Tang Shui. He asks him more about Sun and what type of a man he is. He sarcastically laughs as he hears Tang describe him as a selfless person. One morning, the revolutionaries and Sun and Singh also discussed forming a republic due to the monarch's prolonged ruling. They also discussed the upcoming presidential election and how Yuan Shikai may help hasten Empress Dowager's abdication. Suddenly, their glass windows break as shooting occurs in their area, and they hide immediately to protect themselves. After the incident, they manage to capture the assailant. After that, the assailant is interrogated and the reason for his attack is out despite of Sun. Subsequently, the interrogation is no longer pushed through according to Xing's order. Days later, the presidential election takes place in a conference hall. Sun, Yuan, and Xing are the candidates for the temporary president position. The ballot voting commences as Sun nervously fidgets his feet outside the hall. Minutes later, results are announced, and Sun Wen wins the job presidency with 16 votes out of 17. After a while, Yuan Shikai discovers he has lost. He angrily throws fragile jars everywhere. Later, he bitterly commands to remove Tang Shui as a negotiation representative. During the inauguration ceremony, provisional president Sun Wen powerfully speaks his pledge in front of many people. He strongly gives his speech to people when suddenly, the crowd switches emotions when he mentions relinquishing his position to Yuan Shikai later. Subsequently, Singh and Sun argue as Sun accedes to Yuan Shikai's demands. He aims to achieve his revolutionary goal in exchange for giving up his position to an enemy, and Singh is extremely furious as he leaves the room. One morning, Singh and Zhang An roam around an empty and new house. Zhang An whispers to Xing that she is carrying his child. Xing is out of words. He happily smiles. Meanwhile, Sun stands in front of an unfinished painting of the revolution. Xing arrives, and they discuss matters over the revolution. Now, Sun clearly understands Xing's point last time. There must be a system to restrain Yuan Shikai and others who wish to dream of becoming emperor. Consequently, he writes down his telegram about his plans and implementation that will last a long time. With Sun's public declaration on implementing provisional law and a legally protected revolutionary system, Yuan Shikai is furiously provoked. His desire for power becomes bigger. One morning in the King Palace, Yuan Shikai tells a story about a French revolution and a gruesome death of a king. The room is frighteningly silent. Feared, Long Yu starts shedding tears, and she demands him to come closer. She asks for his protection, thus not ending up like the king in the story. As Yuan leaves, Long Yu realizes he has broken his promise and has banded with the revolutionaries. Afterwards, she furiously commands to dismiss him as prime minister. After that, Sun receives the news on the no changes to prolonged monarchical power.
He angrily complains and then suddenly commands his subordinate to publicly send out telegrams regarding this matter. Meanwhile, the Kin Palace receives numerous telegrams from neighboring nations. They wish for her to step down as the majority signs the petition to make the Republic effective immediately. Long Yu starts to falter, and she blames it all on Yuan. The palace's atmosphere becomes obstreperous. After that, Long Yu takes a deep breath and loudly prays to her ancestor in heaven. Everything is crumbled. The ministers become greedy, revolutionaries run wild, and neighboring nations are against her. She claims to have failed her ancestors, but at least to her realization, sun does not cause havoc nor invade the palace. Seconds later, she shouts, abdicate, causing silence in the room. Not long after, Long Yu steps down. Then, Sun decides to resign after he finishes his tasks. Yuan is confidently ready to be the next president as Sun assures him to relinquish his complete authority to him. After some time, Sun gathers ambassadors from different nations to introduce himself as a provisional president for the first and last time. He pleads with them to recognize their governance system and China's new republic. He added that he'll treat the royal family the same as the citizens, with no unfair treatment or inflicting capital punishment. Meanwhile, Lin Juman's letter reaches his wife, Chen Yang. She emotionally sheds tears as she reads the heartwarming message of her husband while reminiscing their past together. After a while, she gives back the letter to Sun to spread the messages to others. Later that day, he goes to the hall where the finished revolution painting is. He carefully places the letter on the center table. The movie ends when people gather in the hall to witness Sun's last speech as provisional president before he steps down from his position. He long strives for revolution, not recognition, he says. He ends his speech by spreading the message from Juman's letter to his wife about how revolution seeks eternal happiness for everyone in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day. Stop. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from LMT Infinite Channel. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.